I'm Coyote Peterson. This morning, we're in the Sonoran Desert, and right here next to me is a creosote bush, which is gonna lead me to one very special lizard. Ah. Oh, dang it. Oh, well, we know where he is. For anyone that has ever spent time exploring in the southwest, I'm willing to bet there's a good chance that you have seen a lizard. However, there's a big difference between seeing and catching a lizard. Some, like the regal horned lizard, are rather slow, which makes them easy to catch. Then you have collared lizards, which if you're quick enough to catch them, there's a good chance they will also turn around and catch you. I got a hold of him and he's got a hold of me. Look at that, ah, geez. With their teeth. Holy cow, all right, um, whoa, those teeth are super sharp. When it comes to Arizona's Sonoran Desert, one of my favorite species is the desert iguana, which is actually pretty easy to track down as long as you follow the right signs in the environment. Now this is the creosote bush. Oh, it smells so good. This is one of the most fragrant plants that you have here in the Sonoran Desert. Now what these iguanas are looking for is this right here. These little flowers are breakfast. All we gotta do is follow the trail of creosote bushes and hopefully it's gonna lead us to one of these little lizards. One key to having an animal encounter is being able to be patient, which is oftentimes easier said than done, especially when dealing with the heat of the desert. Oh, it is scorching hot. It is about 105 degrees. We've been out here since about six o'clock this morning. We're approaching noon right now, which is okay because the desert iguana does better in high heat than most other lizard species. We are in a field of creosote bushes and mesquite trees. We've been looking for hours. I didn't think it was gonna be this tough to find one. As our search continued, the endless expanse of desert scrubland became more and more disorienting. The sun beating down, its beams of light slowly cooking us as we rounded spine-covered plants and stared into empty creosote bushes. I mean, there are literally thousands of these creosote bushes out here, and you can see how sparse they are. I mean, you can pretty much walk up like this, look in, no lizard, keep moving. Time seemed to be dragging on forever, until finally, I spotted our target. There's one right there. Well, it's a lizard. I can't tell if it's a desert iguana, but there's definitely a lizard right there basking in that tree. You see its tail hanging down? Oh, it looks like a desert iguana. I can see its tail. Oh, this is it. Okay, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch it. This is the first one that we've seen. He's pretty low. He's probably got a burrow right under there. Um, okay. Follow me. Let me see if we can get him. This is just, we're gonna have one shot at this. He's just up on that branch. He's holding on. He's got his foot wrapped around that branch. Okay, I'm pretty much just gonna have to make a jump into that creosote bush and try to grab him. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah. Ah. Oh. He got right down that burrow. Dang it. Oh, well, we know where he is. Oh, did you see how fast they are? Unbelievably fast. All right, first thing we need to do is block up any other possible exits for this burrow. And then what I'm gonna use is a bottle of water, dump that down the hole, and hopefully I'll get him flushed back out. All right, we ready? Not the smartest thing to do with your last bottle of water in the desert, but when you wanna catch a desert iguana, sometimes you don't have many options. During monsoon season, burrows flood on a daily basis. So what I'm doing is replicating a completely natural occurrence. Uh, uh, this burrow might be really deep. Water. We're gonna need more water. 
Will I catch the desert iguana? Click watch next to see the epic conclusion. And don't forget, subscribe to join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.